welcome to MTI TV. I'm Sam and today we're going to talk about backsplash installations. I'm joined by our technical service manager, Logan Rivas. So Logan, how are you, man? Great. Thanks for asking, Sam. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. So backsplashes, especially backsplashes in the kitchen. Right. Well, I think, you know, when we think about a, a backsplash, there are some specialty applications out there. But typically, if you're talking about a backsplash, nine out of 10 times, we're talking about a residential kitchen, yeah. you know, behind somebody's sink and their countertop. And so I think that's where we'll probably focus today. Yeah. And I think a lot of the kitchens nowadays, um, I can, I think back to when my, in my mom's house, when she was cooking, there was, it was almost combat cooking. There right. was always something boiling and splashing up on the wall behind. But nowadays there's, there are event fans and things like that. So it's not as caustic, I think, but there are some issues. Well, but and there's a reason tile's always been used in that application, right. or at least commonly been used, because if it does get dirty, it's really durable and it's really easy to clean. Yeah. And so it's always been a, a popular choice for backsplashes, but now there's so many different choices out there in the tile market for different visuals. And so you get a lot of different opportunities to create a lot of different visuals. Yeah. And then there's just a lot of different tiles. There's porcelains, there's, there's wall tiles. So let's talk about, you know, mastic. Mastic. Okay. So this, uh, this really feels like it's been sort of a, a dirty word in the industry for a yeah. while. And, and it's really not necessary for it to be that way. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a good product. It's been around a long time. Yeah. And it's, we've installed a lot of successful backsplashes over the years with Mastic. So I don't want anybody to feel like Mastic is necessarily a bad product. Um, but there are some limitations to that product. And, and I think it's important that we kind of talk about that and how that, how that product has sort of gotten a bad name. I understand the convenience of mastic. I take a bucket. I don't have to mix it. I open the bucket up. I smear it on the wall. I set my tile. I close the bucket. I didn't make a mess. I didn't have to use a hose. I didn't do any of those things. But, um, I, you know, based on the tile types and the wall that you're going over, mastic might not be the best choice. Well, and this is really important. So we, we, we really need to start at the base of the, uh, of, of the installation. So if we're, what, what are we installing over? So yeah. um, if you're talking about a residential backsplash in a yeah. kitchen, chances are it's drywall, yeah. okay? Um, there's a chance that there's some backer board, a tile backer board back there, but oftentimes, uh, I, I, you know, you're gonna find that probably nine out of 10 times, it's, it's drywall. And you gotta remember, a lot of these backer board manufacturers, they brag about having waterproof backer boards. And so yeah. that is another factor in, in whether I can get away with using well, mastic. Well, it, it gets confusing because there are so many products out there. And um, we'll, we'll talk about the TCNA handbook and some different methods that are out there. But it's, it's important to remember, yeah, if you've got a tile backer board that's, that's waterproof or you've gone out and you've purchased a waterproofing membrane and applied it, that's going to affect what types of products you can use. You're absolutely right. And, and also the industry is starting to see ready to use products that that aren't mastic that would fit the bill and be able to work. So you need to distinguish the difference between those and just make sure you're understanding what the product is that's in the bucket and what the product is that you're going onto the wall. No, you're right. And so along those lines, what's happened in the industry, um, traditional mastics are an organic adhesive. Yeah. It's basically just tile glue. And yeah. um, so basically it's a, it's a water-based adhesive. And so that's where you run into problems if you have, um, say, a, a waterproof substrate, and then you have like a porcelain tile, a large porcelain tile that's, that's basically non-porous itself. And so if you've got, you've got that water in the mastic that needs to evacuate. So you've got a large tile, you've got a waterproof substrate, and you sandwich in, in between the two. And then chances are you have a really thin grout joint and there's nowhere for that water to go. Correct. And so that's where mastic runs into trouble. It's not that it's a bad product. It's just the types of tiles and substrates that are being used have changed so much over time they're not suitable for every purpose. Yeah, I always tell everybody, it's like putting the lid back on the bucket. As long as the lid stays on the bucket, the mastic stays soft and creamy. When I go over a waterproof membrane and use a porcelain tile over top of a mastic, I just put the lid back on the bucket and the, the water can't evacuate and get out of there and have the mastic do its job. And so again, it's not the mastic's fault. 
It's the application and the installation it just, system's fault. It just can't dry. Right. And so, but to your earlier point, there are new products like yeah. our Ultrabond Eco GPT. Yeah. So it's a ready to use adhesive, but it's a completely different technology. Yeah. It's 100% solids, there's no water in it. So it could be used in those sorts of applications. Um, but again, it's just because you open a bucket and pull it out of the bucket without mixing, doesn't mean it's a mastic. Correct, correct. Okay, so we've determined that mastic isn't the worst and it isn't the best. It just depends on the application, what you're going over and what you're putting on the wall. So let's go get a little more specific. Let's talk about a three by five subway tile. Um, okay. uh, it's porcelain based. Let's, um, what product should, what mastic or what mortar should I be using with that? Okay, so you brought up subway tile. Yeah. And this has been a really, really popular look in the industry for, yeah. you know, going on five, six years now, uh, especially for applications like backsplashes. And so it's really important to know what type of subway tile you're dealing with. And, and that what that comes from is a lot of times it's a, it's a ceramic wall tile. So it's a white bisque, um, so a white bodied tile that has a, a glaze over it. And then you mentioned porcelain. So Porcelain again is, is like a form of uh, is a like a form of, of ceramic tile, all right, but it's much less porous, all right. So it's a completely different process as far as production. Um, and then you could also have a glass tile. I've seen glass subway yeah, tiles, I and now too. we're getting into something that's really different. And so um, these are all considerations. And so we know what we're going over. We know we've got a a drywall substrate. Okay, now we've got a subway tile. And so yeah, now it's time to decide how are we going to set this tile. Correct. And a lot of times what you can do is, first thing is turn that tile over and look at the back. I always tell everybody, the top of the tile looks fantastic, but where you need to make your decisions is based on the back of the tile. That's how you can determine what it's made of and how much porosity it has. Yeah, so, okay, and so in the instance where uh, you've got a porcelain or you've got a ceramic tile, um, you're going to look at, you're going to want to look at the size of it overall as you make your decision. Um, but what makes it really simple for us and what we really like to do is go with one of our cementitious mortars, one of those ANSI A118.4 mortars. Um, and, and, and so what that does is it gives you a mechanical bond um, as well as an adhesive bond because of the, the latex that's in these mortars. Um, and, and it gives you strength, it gives you flexibility, um, and, and you really don't have to worry about is this appropriate. So um, you mentioned some specialty stuff like glass. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a different animal, and yeah. so we have some specialty mortars. Uh, so our Adiesel XP10, for instance, uh, it's a great option for glass, and, and that's really where we're going to go almost every time when you ask us, uh, unless it's a really special situation. Um, and, and so, uh, again, it's really important. And so the subway tile look is so common, but we really need to first identify what kind of subway tile are we dealing with here. Right, because one of the things you need to understand with glass is it's the first time now that light doesn't hit the surface and bounce off. It actually penetrates it, hits the bottom, and ricochets around inside in there. And if you've got a dark or the wrong colored uh, mortar underneath there, it could darken the bottom of the glass tile or even on, at the edges, and it could really ruin the look of that glass tile. You want to bring that bling to your glass tile, which is why you chose it from the beginning, is you want to go ahead and use a diesel XP10. Um, it really, it's the brightest, whitest mortar on the market. Yeah, and that's important. What you don't want to do is spend all that money on a glass tile and then mute, you know, the brilliance of that of yeah. that glass by using a, a mortar that's kind of dark or, or could really affect the, the visual of it. And so, um, but for our purposes, okay, well, that's not the direction we're going. All right, we it's not a glass tile that's been selected, and so. Um, so we're going to go back and think about these cementitious mortars, is ANSI 118.4, um, and uh, well, let's the uh, our Caraflex line, okay? So Caraflex yeah. Plus, for instance, uh, that would be a great option. It's kind of a middle of the line product uh, that 90, 95 percent of the jobs that are out there, you can take this product and you can do it, whether it's big tile, small tiles. Porcelain, ceramic, doesn't matter. Right, it has that flexibility. Remember, if you've got tiles on your backsplash by your stove, as you're cooking, that temperature is rising. You might have the air conditioner on in the summertime at 72, 70 degrees in your house, and now you've got boiling water, you've got the oven on. It's rising past those tiles. Those tiles are expanding a little bit from all that high heat, and it's pulling on that bond line. Because I have that flexibility and I have that really good bond to the back of that tile, I'm not going to have an issue. Yeah, people 
tend not to believe this when we tell us tell them this, but uh, tile really does move. So yeah. when we talk about thermal expansion and contraction, it's like you said, it heats up in a hurry when there's a heat source near it, yep. and then you say you wipe it down with something wet afterwards, and you remove the heat, and now it cools off really quick. So now it's shrinking back again. You know, again, this is all about just making sure we give you the best possible installation, the best possible product to keep your installation looking great for a long time. All right, so we talked about what mortars to use with the tile. Now the next question is, what crowds do I use? There's a ton of them out there, and there's a ton of options. So let's just kind of go through and discuss those. Yeah, you? well, that's a good question, and it's a lot like the question we asked when we decided what to use to set uh, the tiles. And so we know we're talking about a subway tile, right. um, but again, there's different types of subway tiles out there. So if it is porcelain, chances are you can use your traditional cementitious crowds. So like our Ultra Color Plus FA, no problem. Uh, you can use a Flex Color CQ. Um, you could even use an epoxy if you feel like you need an epoxy. Our Care Epoxy CQ. Those are all great options. Um, you know, but if it's glass, uh, you know that's kind of a different animal. Again, Flex Color is a great option. Um, you can use Ultra Color Plus FA, but our best option for that is our Flex Color 3D, which is actually a translucent grout. And I know you love this product. Yeah, I, absolutely. Um, you have to understand the differences between Flex Color CQ and Flex Color 3D. Flex Color CQ is a clear acrylic with little tiny colored quartz in there. And I'm looking through the acrylic and I'm seeing the colored quartz and that's how I establish the color. When it comes to Flex Color 3D, now I tint that acrylic. So it's no longer, it's clear still, but it has a tint to it. And I put a clear glass bead in there. And what it does is, remember that light getting inside of the tile when a glass tile? It now allows it to pass through and transfer over to the next piece of tile totally changes the way that glass tile system looks. I, I Just a phenomenal product when it comes to glass well, tile. It, it really is. And then so you think about when, and you know, we talked about this when selecting the mortar, I mean, we wanted that brilliant white underneath it just yeah. to make sure we don't mute the, the, the brilliance of the glass tile itself. Um, you can really, really change the look of a glass tile uh, when you yep. put a, a solid grout in there that blocks yeah. the light, like you said. And so, uh, I mean, it's not that it won't look good, but it can really change the overall look. So, so 3D, if you've never seen it, it's really, really cool. Uh, check it out. We have some videos online, um, but it's a great option for glass. But um, there is something you need to be really um, aware of, though, when you're dealing with subway tiles. And so, and if it is a ceramic wall tile, so that we talked about that, that white bisque tile uh, yeah. that has the glaze. So um, it depends on the tile, but sometimes you'll see the glaze as it comes over the edge of the tile. It's not very consistent. And yeah. so you'll have, even within a single grout joint, um, you may have kind of a wavy pattern uh, to where the bisque is exposed in some areas, and then it's, but it's covered in glaze and others. And then you may have an entire joint that's not covered, and the one next to it is covered. And so why that's important is it affects the, the way a grout will dry. And so if you've got a cement-based grout and you mix water into it and then you put it in that joint, if it's got areas where it's pulling water out of the grout into the, into the tile itself in different, in different speeds, yep. it can really affect shading and the, and the finished color of your grout joint. So that's just something you really need to consider. You know, a lot of times people say, um, my grout is splotchy. And I always say you can't make splotchy grout, but you can make grout splotch. And that would be by how fast that water comes out and how consistent. Think about it like uh, icing on a cake as it's running down the cake on the outside of the cake. The whole cake's not frosted, but there are sections that are frosted. Same things inside that grout joint. And where that, that, that glaze is at prevents that water from pulling through, and it'll actually dry a little darker there. And it'll give you that spotty look. So is there a ready-to-use grout that would be the solution for here. Right. And so this brings us back to Flex Color CQ. Yeah. And, and we mentioned it already is a great option with, with porcelain, um, even with glass. Uh, and what this does is this is a, this is an acrylic grout um, that, that has, the color is actually in the aggregate, in the coated quartz aggregate. And so you can't affect the color of this, all right? It, it, the color is built into the grout. And so um, use that grout 
it comes out of the bucket the right color, you apply it, it's the right color, you yeah. clean it, it's the right color, it dries, it's the right color. And so it just guarantees you that you're gonna get exactly what you're looking for. And it's really easy to use. Yeah, and performance wise, um, it, it's it, from that ease of application, you put down as much as you think you can clean within a couple of minutes, and then you close the lid on the bucket. It doesn't dry. There's, I'm not adding something to that to dry. It dries naturally, exposed to the air. And so I can control it, I can control on the cleanup side, how much I do. It's a really, really cool product and it's the next step in grouts. Well, and the other thing that's really nice about it is uh, it's highly stain resistant. And yeah. so um, without even a sealer being applied to it, it resists stain. Now, again, you have white grout, you dump red wine on it, okay? It just gives you an extra couple of heartbeats to get it off of there. Um, but again, it, it, it's really great for this application. So again, Flexmiller CQ, Great, great option. Yeah, as we say in my house, shame on you for spilling the red wine. Absolutely. Um, the other thing is uh, with an epoxy grout, which are um, which are used, a lot of people um, do a lot of uh, cooking, um, uh, boiling spaghetti sauce and splashing up onto your backsplash. If I'm going to go ahead and I want impervious, not going to penetrate, not going to stain grout, it's going to be an epoxy. Yeah. Look, if you're if you're an amateur chef and you know or Maybe you are a chef and that's how you use this and this is going into a commercial application. You know, these are the things you need to be aware of. Um, but again, flex color yeah. for ease of use, gives you some of those qualities, great option, but certainly all three have their place and so never hesitate to ask us what's best for your project. And you gotta remember it comes in all 40 colors. Um, and uh, the other thing that we need to talk about is Around the perimeter, so many people hard grout, well, it's a term in the industry, but basically you grout all the way down to the bottom of the countertop, all the way up to the bottom of the cabinets, and if there are right angles or change of directions, you grout that also. And that really isn't the acceptable way of doing that. So what is the no, solution right. for that? Well, so it looks like a grout joint, right? It's, it's, it's another joint. So I got the grout out, yeah. so why not just go ahead and put it in there? Um, and, and I get that. And... Um, people have gotten away with it for years, but a lot of times, if you look really closely um, in corners and you know where it changes the plane, like you mentioned, if you look in those joints, a lot of times you'll see cracked grout that's yeah. coming out, falling out, um, and that's because it's not supposed to be there. And so that really should be a flexible sealant. And yeah. and, and we talked about the thermal expansion and contraction earlier. Yep. Um, and so again, this area is going to heat up because of the heat sources that are generally around backsplashes, and then it's going to shrink back down, and that puts a lot of stress. And so if you don't have something flexible there. There, that's why you start to see it crack and fall out. So there should be a flexible sealant there. Yep. And so we have our Mopsil T Plus. Yep. Um, it's available in every color, so you don't have to worry about that. You're not having to compromise on color, um, but it gives you that 100% silicone uh, flexibility and sealant uh, to go around the perimeter, and it'll help your installation last for a long time. Yeah, it just allows that thing to expand and contract as a system. So, hey man, Thank you so much. That was a, that's a great conversation. I look forward to the next one. And so for more information, you can give us a call at 1-800-992-6273 or drop by our website at www.moppay.com. I'm Sam, that's Logan, and thank you for watching. If you like what you just saw, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. And to make sure you don't miss the next episode, hit that bell icon down below. Thanks again for watching this edition of MTI TV.